Uh, it's time for another math easy solution term discuss ellipses and basically go over the definition and proof of the equation. Now the equation of an ellipse is x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1 where a and b are just constants and the shape of this equation correlates to this it looks like a flattened circle so just a shape like that. And in fact, the circle is a type of an ellipse. Yeah, so now let's look at the definition of an ellipse. An ellipse is basically the set of points in a plane, uh, the sum of whose distances from this, uh, from this, uh, any of these points to two fixed uh, points, F1 and F2, is a constant. So if we were to draw this ellipse, so let's pick out two points, F1 here and F2. So basically, these two points are fixed, and any point on this ellipse or, or this shape, for example, let's pick this point right here, this distance, call this L2, and then this distance right here, we'll call this L, um, L1. So this L1 and L2. So basically, any distance of any of these points, the, the sum of the distances to these fixed points, or in this case, L1 plus L2 equals constant. So this is by definition. If there, if you have different, uh, the summations are different, then it's not an, an ellipse. So basically, if you have a shape like this, and then if you were to get, let's say, a point here, so then this summation right here, this would also be equal to uh, this right here, this summation, because uh, as you can see, it, this this length right here is more than L2. But then this one right here is less than L1. So every er, anywhere you move, it compensates. You have one longer, one shorter, etc. But the distance, uh, the summations will always be constant for an ellipse. Yeah, now these two fixed points right here, F1 and F2, are called the foci, or plural for focus. So that each one is a focus. And uh, here's a nice historical uh, note here. Basically, one of Jonas Kepler's laws is that the orbits of the planets in the solar system are ellipses with the sun as one of the focus. And, and Kepler was just a um, 17th century astro German astronomer and mathematician. He was a key figure in the 17th century scientific revolution and whose works laid one of the foundations for Isaac Newton's theory of universal gravitation. And note at this time um, they didn't have powerful telescopes or whatnot so basically using uh, ellipsis is a good model for the orbits of the uh, planets. Yeah, so now uh, in order to obtain the equation of an ellipse, let's just place the foci on the x-axis and just center this shape uh, just uh, at the origin here. So basically, uh, let's put the foci on the x-axis as at negative c and 0 and c and 0. So we'll put this point right here is negative c and 0 and at this point right here is C and 0. And we'll call these F1 and this is F2. So th this point right here is F1 and F2. Yeah, and basically uh, we do this so that the origin is just halfway between the foci. So that's this distance. Uh, yeah, basically from here to here is half the distance from, from these two foci. Yeah, so now if we were to pick a point P of X, Y, let's just pick it somewhere here. So we'll call this P of X, Y. So this is at this distance X right here. And the height is Y. Basically, so now here, let the sum of the distances from a point on the ellipse to be, um, yeah, to the foci be 2A, which is greater than 0. So what they're saying is, if you put, well, yeah, so basically then P of X is a point on ellipse when, so if this is a point on an ellipse, then this distance right here, we'll call this uh, P F2. And this distance right here, uh, we'll call this P F1. So if we say that the summation of these two is, just call it 2A, just for proof's sake. So, we'll say, so then basically this point is on ellipse if the absolute value, P F1, or the distance from here to here, plus this distance p f2 is equal to 2a. And here we just put 2a uh, in there, and this, this is again constant. So a is constant as well.
And now uh, these distances, we could write these out. Well, we uh, basically write these in terms of x right here. As you can see here, sp split it down here. This is just two right angle triangle. So we could use Pythagoras theorem and find this hypotenuse. So this is just a hypotenuse, which equals to basically in the left side square root of uh, the summation of these two squares of these sides. So from here to here is equal to just basically x plus c. So this distance from here to here is c plus x. So we have x plus c squared. Now we have the plus. This distance right here is y. So plus y squared. And all. then we square root the whole thing uh, because of uh, Pythagorean theorem. So that's that side. Now this right side right here, this equals to c minus x. So this would be the same thing, but we'll have a c minus x all squared, and then this is again plus y squared, and this equals to 2a. So now we could rearrange this and put this on this side so that we get square root c minus x squared plus y squared equals to 2a minus square root x plus c squared plus y squared. And we do this so that we can basically square both sides. So if we square both sides, just to simplify it, this right here, the square root will be gone, but we can also expand at the same time to save time. So this would be, now if we expand this inside, that will just be c squared minus now this times this, do that twice, 2 uh, cx, now negative x uh, times negative x, that's just plus x squared. Now there's a y squared at the end there. Yeah, and now on this right side, if we were to square uh, or just expand this, a so 2a times it by 2a, yeah, this becomes just 4a squared, and now this times this twice, that becomes, uh, you'll have it as 4a square root x plus c squared plus y squared, and now on this one here, times it by itself, Negative negatives become a positive. Let's put this down here, and then we can expand this out to save time. So x plus c all squared that becomes well x squared, x times c twice, so two x c, and then plus c squared. And now we have plus y squared right here. Now we could uh, cancel out like terms. As you can see right here, there's a c squared and a c squared. They could subtract out. There's a y squared and there's a y squared that subtracts out. As well, there's an x squared and there's an x squared, so that also subtracts out. And now what we could do is just, this, there's a square root here, it's a negative, let's move this over to this side, and then this over to this side, so we get 4a, and then uh, this is gonna be x plus c, all squared, plus y squared equals two, there's a 4a squared, now there's a 2cx uh, that we're adding it, so 2xc plus 2xc, that becomes plus 4xc. Now as you can see, there's a 4 everywhere, so we just divide everything by 4, or just simply erase the 4 out. So we get this so far. And now what we could do now is square everything again, just because uh, there's a still a square root there. So squared, squared, so we square this, this left side becomes a squared, times it by, now we get to expand this out, this is going to be x plus c, yeah the square root is gone, so this is going to be x squared plus 2xc plus c squared, now there's a plus y squared right there, this equals to now on this side, a squared times it by itself, so a to the power of 4, now this, add this up twice, a squared, xc, and now we have this side, x squared, c squared. Yeah, now if we expand this out, this left side, well, this will just be a squared, multiply that in, a squared, x squared, plus 2a squared, xc, plus a squared, c squared, plus a squared, y squared, equals 2, this whole right side a4, 2a squared xc, plus x squared, c squared. And now what we could do is just cancel the like terms of 2a squared xc, and 2a squared xc, that cancels, cancels out. There's no other like terms, 
But now a clever thing that my calculus book does is that it tries to separate an a squared minus c squared term on both sides. And to do that, it does this basically, it factors out this x squared here. So then we're left with a squared. It also moves this x squared c squared term to this side so that we can factor out this x squared and we're left with a c squared. Now we add this, this y term. This is gonna be a squared y squared. Now this equals two and now it factors out an a squared. So it factors out this, so a squared left with an a squared but also brings this last remaining term onto this side so you could factor this a squared and, and be left with a negative c squared. So as you can see, we have a squared minus c squared. Yeah, and notice now from the above figure, if we scroll up to the ellipse, as you can see here, this distance from this negative c to this c is equal to, well, this is just 2c, because that's just c, uh, negative c, distance c to the origin, do that twice to 2c. So now this distance is less than well, 2a, which is basically the summation of uh, the distances from this point to uh, both uh, foci. So as you can see, PF1, as you can see, it goes up and down. So this has to be greater than just going directly to this point. So 2c is, is less than 2a. We'll write that down. 2c less than 2a. And now we could simplify this, divide the, C, the, the 2 out. c is less than a. So now in this case, when we look at this term, this makes the a squared minus c squared. Since a is greater than c, the squares of it is greater. So this point, this can be larger than c. So a squared minus c squared has to be greater than zero. And now for convenience, we let uh, basically b squared equals to a squared minus c squared. And the reason for that is it just becomes simpler right here. This a squared minus c squared is gone. So now the equation becomes, this is just x squared times it by b squared, plus there's an a squared y squared. Now this equals to a squared b squared. And now what we could do is basically divide both sides by a squared b squared to simplify this further. Because there's an a squared, there's a b squared on these, so we'll cancel these out. So divide everything out, a squared, b squared. And and now basically, we'll cancel these out, so b squared's gone, we're left with a, x squared divided by a squared, plus this is gonna be y squared divided by right here, which is b squared, and this equals two, one. Yeah, now this is basically the equation of the ellipse that we are used to. Yeah, and basically that's the proof for the equation of an ellipse. And now since b squared equals to a squared minus c squared, then we get basically, well, b squared equals a squared minus c squared. Now this a squared minus c squared, this is, well, uh, yeah, this is less than basically a squared because whatever you have a squared, you're subtracting. Um, c squared from a squared, so that's going to be less than if you just had a squared. Thus, we have this, we get basically b squared less than a squared, or b is less than a. Yeah, now the x-intercepts, uh, they could be found by setting, well, y equals to zero. So then we're dealing with, this it goes to zero, we get x squared divided by a squared equals to one. So then this becomes, let's move it around, x squared equals to a squared, or x equals to plus or minus square root of a squared, which basically becomes x equals to plus or minus a right here. This is the square root of this a squared. Just a, those just cancel right there. Yeah, and thus we get two points right here, and they're uh, the corresponding points a and zero. And negative a and zero are called the vertices of the ellipse. And the line segment joining the vertices is called the major axis. And in this case, it's our x axis. And now to find the y intercepts, we just uh, do similar like as above and set x equals to zero. So then we're dealing with if x is equal to zero, just there's a b squared now. So we're dealing with y squared over b squared equals to one. Move this around, we get y squared equals to b squared 
or y is equal to, when you square root everything, plus or minus b. And now go over another uh, note on the equation of an ellipse. Uh, basically, it's unchanged if x is replaced by negative x, or y is replaced by negative y. And the reason is because, well, there's an x squared right here, there's a y squared. If you put a negative number, it's going to be square, um, squared and be positive, yeah, same in this case. So it doesn't, it doesn't change the equation in any such way. So basically, the ellipse is symmetric about both axes. Another note, basically, notice that if the foci coincide, then c, which is the distance to each foci, would become, well, just zero. It would just be at the origin, and a equals to b. Yeah, that's because, well, we know that a squared, is just, or b squared, is equal to uh, a squared minus c squared. So if this is become zero, uh, basically we get a equals to b or a squared equals b squared, they just equal each other, and the ellipse becomes a circle with radius equals a, which also equals to b. So basically, we write this down. x squared, this becomes, well, divided by r squared, because these all equal to r. Now there's a plus y squared. There's a, instead of b, we just put r squared equals to 1. Now multiply r uh, on both sides, we get x squared plus y squared equals to r squared, and this is the equation of a circle. Yeah, thus, basically, you can uh, consider a circle as a type of an ellipse. Yeah, now to basically summarize everything we just uh, covered, basically, in summary, the equation of an ellipse is x squared divided by a squared plus, b, plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1 and has foci plus or minus c and zero, where basically c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. This is just rearranging the um, uh, b squared equals to a squared minus c squared. So it doesn't matter, this just moves it over here. It's the same equation. And has vertices of plus or minus a and zero. So if we were to uh, graph these out inside this ellipse, and the vertices here is going to be at a, here is at negative a and zero. And now the foci is at here at negative c, and here at c. And these are and these are on the major axis, which is x. And basically the yeah the y-intercepts that's at this point. This equals to basically yeah this is at b, and this is at uh, negative b right here. So that's at these points. So this height is b. This uh, length or width is is c. So thus, if you were to uh, write this out right here, this is, well, C, this is B, and also now if you were to draw, just for a uh, useful uh, note right here, if you were to draw a straight line across it, this is uh, the hypotenuse, and this is actually A, because, well, we know uh, A squared is equal to, uh, this is just equal to b squared plus c squared. You could just rearrange this. So then this is this has to be a. Yeah, so a is the distance from here to the origin as well as this to here. Yeah, just to know this isn't the scale. This c point should be somewhere actually closer to here to make it uh, look more uh, more realistic as a has to be equal to this length. But anyways, that's all for today. If you learned from this pretty extensive uh, video on ellipses, well, now at least you're an expert on ellipses if you followed through this fully. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you learned, like always, you can download these notes in the link below, and stay tuned for another